Welcome back! I am some guy you've never heard of, and this is the tale of Narafin the Scald. I give thanks to you once more, Lady Mara, for my peaceful time at the college. Hey, Lucian. Time to, um... See about our provisions. I... Oh my. I apparently need to see about our provisions because, uh... I most certainly don't want us to starve. Oh, Vyarma. Welcome to Solitude, home of the arts here in Skyrim. Um, what have you got for sale? of what I'm looking for. I was hoping you might have some of the uh, history books for sale. May song speed you along. Formal training may have worked for me, but it's not You there. found the Bard's the college song. kitchen. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. What have you got for sale? Take a look. Are you willing to buy some of my old uh, rotted food? Yes, yes, you are. Fantastic. Thank you, my good man. Oh, that puts me in much better in a much better situation. Okay, now what do you have? Well, I'll buy your salt, obviously. Pork or loaf, sure. Cooked beef, yes, please. Bread loaf. Grilled chicken breast. This carrot and this seared slaughter slaughterfish. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I missed one. Alright, let's see about getting some more water and some other food. Didn't mean to do that. I always wanted to play together with other bots. Do I have five and seven?
sure she will be happy to play something for us. She does it so well. Some say I got my position because my cousin is the Emperor. Nonsense. The man's given me nothing. He can't even be bothered to attend my wedding. Well, just because he's given you nothing doesn't mean that uh, being connected to him hasn't benefited your career. Welcome to the Winking Skeever, friend. Um, I'd like to refill my empty water skins and bottles, please. Of course. Thank you. And then what have you got for sale? Drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry. That's right. I've forgotten that I can convince anyone to buy anything now. Thank you very much, my good man. Winking skeever next time your foot sore. Solitude need to learn the value of charity. Welcome to Bits and Pieces. I'm sure you'll find what you need here. Greetings. Mm -hmm. Um, what have you got for sale? Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. I wonder if Lucian could learn this. Thank you very much. Come back to bits and pieces anytime. Lucian, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I'd like to train you some more. Excellent. I've been looking forward to this. What shall we work on this time? Um, I want to teach you a spell. You do? Splendid! Which spell? 
Um, courage. Wish I could use it on myself. Oh, well. Well, I can use it on you. Shazam! How do you feel? Braver? Marginally? Splendid. You know, Lucian, I don't say this often enough, but I really do enjoy your positive attitude about things. Oh, I'm glad you're here too. In a strictly friendly way, you understand. I know you're wearing that amulet and everything, and I just wanted to, you know. I'm bored. Oh, just hug me. Can we get some food instead? I'm not playing with you, Kai. You play me. That is a nice hat. That is a lizard with style. Fresh fish, Fruit. straight from the fjord. Fresh the, boat. the freshest in Skyrim. I've got Greetings. Fresh fish for you. What have you got for sale? Just what you see here. Lot of fish. Good. Thank you very much. Troubled times. Be on your guard, guard, guard. All right. Thank you. Uh, you and everyone else. Greetings. You look like you could do with a ripe apple, or a tomato, cabbage, or, or leek. Perhaps. What have you got for sale? Everything I've got on display, really. Definitely be having your garlic. And your apples. And some cabbages and carrots. And I guess I'll take a leek as well. Or six. Thank you. Come back when you figure out how to spend money. I just spent money. Hey, What's it Greetings. Greetings. You wouldn't have a few minutes to run down to the docks, would you? Uh, what do you need from the docks? Well, I've got a shipment of spices the East Empire Company is holding up. I need someone to convince them to release it. Yeah, I, should, I suppose I could do that for you. That shouldn't be a problem. Great. Get back to me when you're done and I'll give you something for your time. Oh, sure. Thank you. I'll be right Good back. Luck out there. It seems like a tough time to be wandering, Scott. Well, I'm not going to wander. I'm just going down to the docks. Shouting is made good. Thank God. Glad we straightened that out. We didn't straighten anything out. What is it with the guards stopping me for non criminal things? Oh, butterflies. Ah, oh, I think it's doing me some good to get out of the city proper for a few minutes. Take care of the horses, and the goats, and the chickens, ugh, and the garden. Sounds like, like you do a lot. If you want a horse, or Catla if you're looking for work. I can't help you. Why do you like the farm? I hate it. Everyone feels sorry for me, so they don't treat me too bad, but... Sorry? For what? Both my parents were in the Legion. There was an ambush. Catla said she'd feed me if I could make myself useful. I take care of the animals, run errands, that kind of thing. I guess it could be worse, but I'm sick of sleeping outside with the horses. I want a real home, real parents, not this. 
Oh, wow. Um, you know, I think I could adopt you if you want. Really? Do you... Do you have a place I can live? Uh, yes. I have a home in Falkreese. Oh, wow. Are you... Are you sure? You really wouldn't mind? No, not at all. I have a house Carl and a steward there to take care of you. I mean, I'm not home much, but, uh, yes, I am quite sure, um, stun. Really? You mean it? Wow, thanks, Pa. I promise I won't be any trouble at all. Well, I've taken in an orphan. Interesting. You talk to Ed, brothers. Deja has no words for you. Okay, I wasn't trying to talk to you anyway. Uh, greetings. Hmm? Sorry, I was lost in thought. I'm planning my wedding, you see. So many details to work out. Ah. Well, um, Yvette's, Yvette San asked me to check on her shipment of spices. Ah, yes. If she wants to pay the 2,000 gold tariff, then we'll be all set. Um, Yvette can't afford a tariff. She can barely afford her stand. I suppose I could make it. I do like her spiced wine. Fine. Tell Yvette's son her shipment will be brought up to Solitude shortly. I shall, thank you very much. Some say I got my position because my cousin is the Emperor. Nonsense. The man's given me nothing. He can't even be bothered to attend my wedding. Oh, wow, that, that, is, that is unfortunate. Um, what have you got for sale? Oh, a bit of this and a bit of that. Wow, that is beautiful. Do I splurge for it? I could enchant it at some point. That's nice. Mm. I'll definitely take those from you. Oh wow, I really wasn't expecting you to be selling things, um, especially such interesting things. Oh, you know what, um, I suppose, no, that's not true, um. There'll be more gold where that came from. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Vittoria. to get back to planning my wedding. All right, good luck with that. <clears throat> Don't know why someone talking about their wedding would make me thirsty. <gasps> Speaking of which, um, I have my wedding to plan. Just let me get my things and say goodbye to everyone. I'll meet you at home. Thanks. Thanks again. No problem. Um, it's probably going to be a while before you see me there, but, uh... Sven and Rhea will take care of you. I'll meet you at home. Thanks. All right. No problem, Blaze. Really do need to get around to getting rid of our empty bottles. The whole point of getting so many water skins was to switch away from bottles. Not to just be carrying a ri utterly ridiculous amount of water all the time.
Speaking of weddings... There's some gold for a veteran. What are you doing talking to me? You should be arranging our marriage. Go on now. I don't like to be kept waiting. Alright, well, it's going to be a while before I'm in Riften again to arrange our marriage, but... If you're heading to the Blue Palace, you might want to rethink that outfit. I'm, I was talking to my fiancé, but what's wrong with my outfit? Place those old rags. Stop by Radiant Raymond. What's wrong with my outfit? Nothing at all. It's very nice. If you want something with a little more style, however, you should come by our shop, Radiant Raymond. We could fix you right up. I mean, surely you just... I bought this at your shop. Remember Radiant Raymond when you need a change of attire. I shall, but I bought this from you like a couple of days ago and I'm still quite enjoying it. Looks so majestic. Honestly, I don't understand how you could take issue with this outfit. Um, for what? Who said that? Your voice carries quite well. Can you spare a septum? Lost an eye during the Great War, or I'd earn it myself. I mean, I think you'd still be able to earn money even missing an eye, but uh, here, have a gold piece. Oh, thank you. Divines, bless your kind heart. Always good talking to you, friend. Right. I Welcome needed to, to the let someone the know. Or at least my brother Eric. Ah, oh, there she is. Hello, Yvette. Mm, spice wine for you. It's a family recipe. Oh, uh, the East Empire Company is sending up your spices. Thank you so much. I swear it's a fight with them every shipment. Here's something for your troubles. Why, right, thank you very much. Be careful out there. Oh, you know what? what do now you have for sale? Glad to see. Oh, thank you. What have you got for sale? Everything I got on display, really. Ah, good. I'll take your Nord mead. I know a good recipe that calls for that. Speaking of good which, oh, well, thank you. Oh, uh, Lucian. What can I do for you? Um, what are you carrying right now? Donations are always appreciated. Oh, you want the stuff back? Mm, we can discuss that later. Indeed, we can. We're not carrying any of our. Oh, we have one raw dragon mead that you're carrying. All right. Thank you, Lucian. I'll be right behind you. Which reminds me, I was thirsty. I think I'll have some of the spice wine that she just gave me. Um. Huh? Are we talking just now? No, we weren't. Um. Back to the college. I'm not a pris uh, I'm not a visitor, I'm a student. My drums will lead our troops to victory. I suppose I should start studying. All right. Uh, song. Uh, songs. There we go. Songs of the Return, Volume Five. The Songs of the Return, Volume Five: The Feast of Isgrimoire. It came to pass that our great lord Isgrimoire, the harbinger of us all, sat before an encampment fire. 
The crews of the Yorvaskar, the Fallowfire, and the Kalkaz bade him eat and build, boast and drink, for the boon members of the 500 companions were abroad in the land. Stories were told, hearts won and lost, and always the smell of roasting meat hung in the air. <clears throat> The greatest of us all beckoned every warrior to his side, and spoke the tale of Uthrad's forging. Every mur the harbinger slew died at Uthrad's bite. All through the long campaign, the only weapon that would fit in the harbinger's hand was the mighty Uthrad. As he told it, the most legendary of axes was forged in the darkest of nights. It was the Night of Tears. Isergormor sat staring out across the waters. He rode upon the last ship in his fleet, fleeing Tamriel for the shores of Atmora. From that vantage point, he watched as Sartthol, the first city, burned. A swollen sky poured rain upon the flames and upon the sea, and the greatest of us all wept better, bitter tears. And the text is garbled. The tears in a stein and held his... he... bite told the most legendary of axes was forged in the darkest of then he set to work for Ingol eldest son of the harbinger of us all was the greatest smith of our people have ever known there on the sea Ingol set to work with his tools he used lightning to heat the night's tears the oceans swell to cool them and always his hammer blows rang in concert with the rising wind when Isgrimor awoke the next morning, Ingol presented him with the mighty axe, hewn from the sorrow that had laid him low just the night before. And the harbinger of us all embraced his son. He cried out in joy, sadness, and rage. And there, on the deck of that last ship from Sarthal, Isgrimor named his axe Uthrad, which means Storm's Tears, in the language of Atmora. It was then in telling... Yeah, it was then, in telling the tale that Isgrimor paused, the harbinger of us all called out to lost Ingol, who had been with the crew of the Harak in the storm of separation. For his son, his eldest and greatest joy, was with him always. He who had bound the storm's tears, he, he said, rode with him always in the days of the noble and honored 500. Well, book seven, then. Volume 7. When at last the rightful claim of Sarthal had been retaken, driving the murderous elves back to their lofty cities, did great Isgrimor turn and let loose the fearsome war cry that echoed through the all through all the echoed across all the oceans. The five hundred who yet stood joined in the ovation for the victory and the lament for their fallen peers. It was said to be heard on the distant and chilling green shores of Atmora and the ancestors knew that their time had come to cross the seas. As the reverberations echoed out and drowned in silence, all looked to Isgrimor, who bore the blessed Wuthrat for his next com commandment. With his lungs that bellowed forth the fury of humanity, he bade them to continue their march, that the devious Myrrh might know the terror they had brought on themselves with their trickery. Go forth, he roared, into the belly of this new land. Drive the wretched from their place, palaces of idleness. Oblige them to squalor and toil, that they would see their betrayals as they, as the all sin against our kind. Give no quarter, show no kindness, for they would not give nor show you the same. Our greatest forebearer gave this order as he did not yet understand the prophecy of the twin snakes that he would be fated to die before seeing the true destiny of his line. Hearing this, the circle of captains gathered each their crews unto themselves. From here they decreed, we will go forth. Let each ship's band make its own way, seeking their fates to the open sun. A night spent in feasting, the oath of the companions was sworn anew, with each of the five hundred, so they still named their count, in honor of the shields that were broken at Sarthal swearing to act as shield brother and shield sister to any of the Atmoran line, where their fates to ever again entwine. As the red hands of dawn stretched from the east, so broke the five hundred companions of Isgrimor, setting about their journeys, sailing now across the land, with waves of stone and crests of trees flowing under their footed hulls. The first to break from the grounded fleet was the crew of the Yorvaskar, 
who had been formed of Ysgrimor's closest friends. Their captain was known as Cheek of the River, so called by the Harbinger himself for their youths past in glory. When assembling their glistening hull, he sought out the labors of Menro and Manwi, who now bore the native timbers across this new land of Tamriel. Among their fiercest were Tisnol, who was twice named, and Ter, his twin and shield brother, whose girth was never spoken of to his face. There were others, too, in their band. Mexican the Walker, Runnel, who fought with his offhand, and Yust, the Smiler. These and others were sworn to Jeek, and they pushed forth into the shadows where yet the sun had not reached. Southwards they went, by beast and by foot. Elves they found, though none remained to tell what those battles entailed. The numbers of the Yorvaskar never faltered, so shrewd they were in battle, with blade mines as sharp as their blades. Once as the sun beat from its high home, yonder the tiny, the one who ran ahead, came over the hill to tell what was seen. Amidst a vast plain his eyes had met a mon monument of a bird, whose eyes and beak were opened in flame. When his brothers and sisters crested the hill, they too saw its glory, but they were afraid for no elven settlement could be seen on the horizon. But this is not seemly, said Kulwi, who went by Loat when hiding his face. Is not this wide land fit for harvest? Why have not the elves, while to their core, seemed to exploit and tame it? They asked of their elven captives, for they had many, what they found unfit about these plains. Yet even the captains, who still bore their tongues, could say nothing of the valley. They looked with fear at the winged colossus, and from their babblings did the warriors of Yorvaskar learn that it was older than even the elves themselves. For those who wrought its solid from its mother stone, nothing could be said, but it was known to drive a magic almost as old as Nern itself, some remnant of the gods' efforts to render a paradise in Mundus before the shattering of shore. This first of many, this crew of the Yorvaster, heathens and ancestors to us all, feared no stories or gods, indeed. If there was something the elves feared, they would have it for their own. Thus began the labors once more of Menro and Manwi, those eager hands again laid to the Atmoran wood which had borne them all across the sea, and what was their ship became their shelter, as this valley became their purview until the end of all their days. Thus began the building of the great city, circled by the running of the White River, as brought forth by these beloved of Eskrimor, yet but twenty-two of the glorious five hundred companions. <clears throat> Alright. Um, I think it's time to intersperse that with some... Uh, spell study oh but um our food situation I was still going to uh, deal with Morrowind suffered a massive red mountain erupts what can I cook I can make a dragon steak remember being a bard isn't just about the meat is there anything I could make with boiled water? Oh, I could make tomato soup. Excellent. And another thing of tomato soup. I can make some sweet apple cider. And cabbage soup. Let me boil some more water and I'll make a handful. Oh, and I can make apple cabbage stew. Fantastic. Let me boil more of our water then. Let me make us some stews and soups. Salmon steaks. Mm. 
And I think that will do. There we go. Now our food situation is in much better shape. It's a fine day for a tune, don't you think? It's always a fine day for a tune. Mm -hmm. Now that that was taken care of... Yes, let me study a spell some more. Just as a break. We spend two hours studying uh, fox skin. Alright, I suppose I should tackle... What was it? Um, Songs of the Kings, Volume 1. Songs of the Kings, Volume 1, King Harald's Verse, by Bjorn Songsword. Thirteenth in the line of Isgrimmar, who opened his fist, released claim on Atmora, and named Skyrim home. First High King of Skyrim and Diviner of our destiny, Harald led us to war and conquest of this land as our own. In, ba in battle, Harald struck down the great Randagulf of Begelin and took up the gauntlets of this warrior unmatched. Harald granted ancient Nords overdue revenge, striking down the snow elves at Lake Honrek. Victory upon victory in Harald's wake, forging our empire, with ancestors cheering, with praise and awaited Sovngarde. After a hundred and eight years, Harald joined with cloaked, Harald joined with cloaked in victory, glory, crafter of the kingdom of Skyrim and the first of the Wall. <clears throat> right. Let's see about finding really another. Like your outfit. Matches your eyes so well. Nah, I don't think so. Oh, I thought she was well, talking to me I for a minute. Honestly, where did my stuff? Oh, Are there any of the books I'm looking for here? No. Oh well. Um. Oh, there are the stairs. Songs of the Kings. I'm looking for songs a good of story the kings. I'll go your studies. One part fiction. Seems like most of these are nine parts fiction. Can we really just make things up? It doesn't seem right. Read carefully. You will get your beaming you hands off that. I wish only the hands. And what are you talking about? Legion. My drums will lead our troops to victory. All right. Uh... Where did it go? Songs of the Kings, Volume Two. This isn't stolen. Songs of the Kings, Volume 2, Song of King Vrager, by Torvi Palehair.
Rumble enemies of Skyrim before King Braga. He forged an empire for the fatherland of man, with the North, High Rock, Cyrodiil, and Morrowind joining our might to claim Tamriel for Shor's sons. We found kin in High Rock, descendants of enslaved, and swore to break their chains and unite our kind. Nords pushed the oppressors with passion and rage, but elven magic held the Nords back at Bjolse. Is that it? Okay. What say you in your defense? What crimes have I committed? Fine, I'll pay off my bounty. Now come along with us. We'll take any stolen goods and you'll be free to go. I have no stolen okay, goods. Fine, of course. What did I get arrested for? I'm so confused. Can I, an enrolled student in the Bard's College, not read books in the Bard's College library? Aldmeri Dominion oh, invade the I Empire. should eat something. This dragon steak that I made this morning. I'll wash it down with some spiced wine. Late 171. Good Ildi, soak in the lore. Yorn, what happened? Uh, Stop! Um, Fade! Morrowind suffered a massive I didn't steal explosion. anything. Bardenfell's Red Mountain erupts. Try to be precise, Yorn. Remember, Aren't youngest bard all right, let's go ahead and read this. Song of the Kings, Volume 3, Song of King Geller by Ivar Bloodsteel. On the king, on son of King Raga, child of Isgrimor and Sky, Geller rose to protect the lands of the Nords from within. A leader of man and warrior great, he took Dwemer halls and shattered their gate. Now the elves go deeper into the ground, but Geller will find them and strike them down. This land belongs to the Nords with Kind's grace, and the elves will be brought to their graves. Oh, it's definitely a little more poetic at this point. Wait, and enroll with the leaves. You have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. What say you in your defense? I. What have I done? I took a book off the shelf in the school that I attend. Are you going to come try to arrest me every time I need to look at a book? Smart man. Is this the way they now collect tuition? We'll take any stolen goods and you'll be free to go. After you pay the fine, of course. Well, I mean, I suppose they didn't ch they didn't charge me a tuition. I guess this is it then. <sighs> oh. Thanks for accompanying me, Lucian. Ah, excuse me. I really do appreciate your moral support. Lady Atia says my voice is second only to hers, but she said. my honor to perform at the Blue Palace on many occasions. His late lordship was quite the admirer. Maybe we could have a chat with Sindra. I'm sure she would be happy to play some. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna see what I can remember from my childhood reading the Adam. Um, and see if I know enough to pass the exam.
<laughs> Honestly, I'm not really interested in that part of being a bard. So much as I am in performing for people. Where's my instructor? That way. She's downstairs. She's not in the dining area. That's Vilya. Not looking for her right now. Um. Heard any news lately? You already know all that I know. Man, her voice carries. Interesting. Um. You can't be too Lucien, about the new but can can you keep Almost it quiet about the fact that I'm engaged? Liable to give you this and I'm a dad now. Not my problem. I'm not sure how Vilya would take it. Hello, friend. I wish you wouldn't take so many. Is Where is she? Comes you. Ask me. I don't want any. What happened to you? Right over here, from the look of it. Hmm. No, she's not in here. Here either. There's Pentia. He's not in here. This was that room, right? Yes. Oh, that is good to know. Thank you. There you are. Hello. I believe I'm ready for my poetic edit exam. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I will say the first part of a verse from one of the pieces of the Poetic Edda, and you must say the next part. I warn you that you must continue all the verses correctly to pass the exam. Are you sure that you're ready? I think as ready as I'll ever be. All right, here we go. It came to pass that our great Lord Ysgrimor, the harbinger of us all, sat before an encampment fire. The crews of the Yorvaskar, the Fallow Fire, and the Karl Krantz bade him eat and boast and drink. For the boon members of the 500 companions were abroad in the land. Good. You recited that perfectly. Next verse. Hail, King Borgus, last son of Ysdrumor, last king of the jagged crown and traitor to shore. Passed out the Nord gods who protected our home. Good. You recited that perfectly. Next verse. This humble scald raises their voice to praise Shore's tongue. From the shadow of Borgus, a new light emerges, dishonor undone. Good. You recited that perfectly. Next verse. Sing the lament of the Red Mountain, the color of blood ill spent. Survivors march under a red sun stained by death. I always wanted to play together with other bards. Let's go to Ireland. The devil tricked the Nords and Shore's heart was never seen. Good. You recited that perfectly. Next verse. Thirteenth in the line of Ysgrimor, who opened his fist, released Claymon at Mora and named Skyrim home. First High King of Skyrim and diviner of our destiny, Harald led us to war. Good. You recited that perfectly. 
final verse. Heads roll from the chopping block under the gaze of Skyrim's high queen. Roleki herself holds the axe and puts down those who rebel against her name. Great job. That's all the verses I wanted to test you on. I'm very pleased with your performance. Your next step is preparing for the loot exam. It is the final oral exam for your studies at the Bard's College. Here's a set of the loot books you need to study to pass the exam. You've been doing a great job, so don't stop now. When you feel ready to take the oral exam, please come and see me. Oh, man. <sighs> Some of that was in what I studied, and I... Wow, oh, I can't believe I remembered that from my childhood. I suppose I do well under pressure. Sure, welcomes you. Oh. You should hear um, Narifin welcomes you. They are naughty. Suppose I will study my. Um, I will study fox skin a little more, and then get some sleep, and start my uh, loot studies in the morning. Mine is not this one, but this one. Right. Good. Let's spend another two hours on that spell. I think I'm getting closer. <clears throat> I really like your outfit. It matches your eyes so well. You would expect me to believe that? I wouldn't joke about that. Oh, there's my chest. <laughs> and that's going to be all for today. Thank you very much. This has been the tale of Narf and the Scald, and I am some guy you've never heard of. Unless, of course, you have. <laughs>